From the horrible people who brought you Cards Against Humanity and Secret Hitler comes a new game, Head Trip, a 3-10 to 10 player board game that takes roughly 30-60 to 60 minutes to play and is for ages 17 and up. And in the game, one of you will be going on a trip. A head trip. You're going to be a certain person, maybe the opposite of me. And you're going to have a question, like, how many teeth is the best number of teeth to have? And you're going to, based on who you are, guess that number. After you've done so, you'll be placing this down on the board and other players are going to guess what you thought based on your circumstance. And players are going to have these little tokens here to utilize and place down. Players are going to try and guess what you thought, and if they do so, they'll succeed. There's a cooperative game, and each player is trying to hold as many chips as they possibly can, going through seven rounds. Through the fifth round, you'll get your bonuses, like extra chips, and if you can get to the seventh round, when everybody can guess the exact number, uh, exact answer, it's you, then you will win the game. If not, you go again. Yes, a cooperative game with a unique party aspect. Let's go ahead and take a look at Head Trip, how to play, how to set it up, and of course, my review. To begin setup for the game Head Trip, the first thing you do is take the main game board out and place it within reach of all players. It doesn't matter what orientation it's set up, just so long as the letters are set up on the top side of the board. Each player is going to get three eyeballs from the eyeball bag. You can take the rest of the eyeballs and leave them in the bag or place them in without within reach for all players to gather. There are two different decks of cards, the ones with the eyeballs and the ones with the heads. Shuffle both of these decks of cards. Place the eyeball deck next to the main game board and take the head deck and place it above the game board and then lay out seven cards in order from left to right next to the deck. Take the number of players in tokens and place them on the fifth card. I'm playing a four player game right now, so I'll check to see and place it here on this five card. And then you're going to go ahead and take these head trip tokens. They're going to have an A, B, a C, and a D. These are going to go off to the side and will be used by the player who's going on the trip. After that, you can go ahead and set aside the extra bags, the extra token in the box, and you're basically ready to begin the game. Playing the game Head Trip is actually quite simple, and how it works is in rounds. Round one, the first player, uh, whatever player you want to begin the game, is going to take the first card in the long lineup of seven cards. They'll flip over that head card, and that is who they're going to go on a head trip as. In this case, it says that you are an old man with a tough mouth, taking a bite out of a hard pineapple. And then, they're going to draw a black card. The black card is going to have a question like, what brings you to the law offices of Rachel Goldbat? In which case, they'll read these answers or responses from A to D. One being, I am being sued by my clown wife. Another being, my wife is a clown and she owes me money. I want to sue the Paris Clown School for making my wife think she could succeed as a clown. And finally, you know why I'm here, Rachel. It's time to quit being a lawyer and embrace who you really are, my clown wife. In which case, I read the head card, I have the question card, and I have to think like this person, this old man with a tough mouth biting a, uh, taking a bite out of a big hard apple, or a big hard pineapple. And then I'm gonna have to go, okay, I think this specific person, getting into their head, is gonna pick this answer. Okay, and I'll place my answer down. Once I place my answer down, make sure that nobody else sees what answers you have left or what answer that you placed. You place it face down right in the middle of this board here. Each player that is not me is going to be placing one of their tokens. And they'll place them on any letter of their choosing based on who they think I would pick based on when I went on this head trip. So they go, I think Michael, being this person, would pick this answer. In which case, everybody will flip this over. And, ah, I picked C. Nobody picked C. For each player who did not pick the correct letter, their tokens are going to be removed. If you did pick the correct letter, you will get your tokens back. And if everyone picked the exact letter, then everyone gets their tokens back, and me, being the head tripper, gets a bonus token. From there, you'll discard the head card along with the black card, and you will move on. The next player to my left will become the person that's going on the head trip, and they're going to draw the card, and they're going to solve or, the best they can what they think is true. They'll take this extra token here and set it aside, and bam, they'll go. Now I'm now this person over here to my left is Vladimir Putin, and the card reads duck duck. And there are four answers. Goose, goose, goosey, 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 goo, and Oh, goose. 
some of these are quite challenging. But that's the basic idea of the game. You'll keep going up to this fifth card here. When the fifth card hits, if you still all have your tokens, you're going to get these tokens divvied out to all players. And the final card is the main head trip. It's where everybody has to guess the exact answer in order to win the game. And that's how it's cooperative. Players, if they lose their eyeballs, will have a chance to come back in the game, um, but otherwise are out. And if any players remain at the end of the game with tokens and are able to solve that last head card, you're going to be the winner of the game Head Trip. Yep, it's that simple. That's how the game plays. Let's talk about what I think about it. So Head Trip is a pretty funky game, actually. It's a party game, and it does cause you to make some thoughts based on what you are and the answers to some of the questions. Now, it has the typical cards against humanity shtick where there are some of them that are just going to be blatantly crazy or make no sense, like the duck duck goose one, but then there's a variety of different gooses and how you would have to come up with that based on who this person is, is going to be maybe arbitrary or maybe there is a logical reason in your head that people are going to have to solve and figure out. But regardless, like the idea of the game is strong. It's a cool little complex idea. Drawing a card here and saying, okay, I'm at a party with the coolest people and I just want to fit in. And now my question is, what's my favorite part of James Cameron's Avatar series? And then there are the four options. And this actually makes a lot of sense as to, okay, I, I have to fit in, I wanna be cool. So what would be a cool thing based on these movies? The colors, shapes, noises, or the compelling plot and memorable characters? Well, maybe I'd pick that last one because I wanna be fit into the party and I'll be like kind of schwab or like you know, snobbish or whatever. And you have to make sure that other people also think in that same way based on what I would pick, but also what I would pick as this specific type of a person. What a cool idea, going on a head trip. It actually functions just like that. It's a little different than like Cards Against Humanity where you're just kind of like picking the best answer or the best response based on the judge. This person finds this specific card funny and thusly I think it's going to be this one. Or as, whereas the way I like to play games is obviously not only is this one funny, but this one makes the most logical sense. Maybe I'm just more of a modern type gamer than a party gamer. But this one brings a lot more to the table in that regard where I actually have to think, okay, I'm a clone of me raised in a CI moon laboratory. And what would I actually pick based on these question cards? And some of them are really, really great. Others are just kind of flunky, silly party ones that a lot of my friends who specifically like to drink the, uh, the spirits would quite enjoy. So it has a bit of a mix of everything. And there is a cooperative nature to this game as well, trying to get through the head trip together. A little psychedelic uh, people that take smoking the devil's lettuce type of thing <laughs> would participate in this. It's really cool, a little stylized game. Yes, it's very simple. It's not as complex as Secret Hitler and definitely not as lengthy either, either. but it's not as basic as Cards Humanity where you're just playing drop the card down and, and see who wins. There is actually some thought into the decisions that you make in this game. Now. The quality of the game. It's actually really nice. All the tokens are really high quality little pieces of like wooden tokens that are um, based and it feels really nice. The, it's like, a, like this base plastic over it. Um, and then you've got the cards here. High quality cards just like the Cards Against Humanity cards. Um, and the main game boards, nice and thick. Don't have a problem with it actually like bending and warping. The bags are even cool too. These are like these... Uh, a linen, I guess, bag. I don't actually know. Is it like plastic slash something else bag? But anyway, they're, they're nice quality. They feel good and sturdy. I'm not worried about any of the pieces messing up or having to be, be have a hard time reading or holding any of the cards. It all works really, really well. So I love the quality. I love the style of the game, too. It's just got these kind of, like, twisted colors and, like, all the symbols and everything just makes sense. So I know exactly what I need to do in the game. It, it, it works, it flows as far as the quality goes and the art style goes. There's not a whole lot of art to the game, but how the game kind of sits looks really cool and interesting and would like to draw people to the table. I also like the fact that this game plays with a lot of players. You can drop a party of 10 or even more if you really wanted to mix the game up. You can add house rules to this game. It's basically just as simple as drawing two cards, choosing an option, and then everybody else trying to guess what you what they think your option was or what is the most correct op option. There's a lot of arguing that happens in the game and like deductive reasoning or like at the end you flip over and you're like B and they're like why B? It should be C or A and, and there's all this kind of conversation that like entwines the party together and starts giving them these fun little like 
arguments that don't really mean anything or have any like logical basis in reality, but it, it compels people to like kind of get to know each other and talk to each other. And so Head Trip is probably my favorite game of these of the, the Cards Against Humanity team. It, it just really, really works as a party game. It really, really works to like bring people together and have fun and make stupid arguments. And there's enough of the cards in here that are like kind of based in reality where you're like, okay, what in this situation would I do if I were this person? And then there's also these like, I don't know, this is this is just ridiculous and, and <laughs> just put stuff down and people just argue about pointless. I would have picked goose, not goose, obviously. And <laughs> people just start going at it in that way. Uh, this is gonna get my seal of recommendation. I really, really like this party game. It's high quality. It shares a nice table presence. It can be played on a small table or a large table. You can play with a lot of people or with just four people. And it still brings that same fun element to the tabletop. I, I really heavily enjoyed this game. I'm actually gonna be keeping this game. I've never actually kept a whole lot of the Cards Against Humanity type party games. Not because I dislike them necessarily, but more so because uh, the, I don't drink enough and I don't have enough big party type things. But this one kind of fits all of the groups I would play with, and it's also a game I can borrow out and bring back to the table later. So yes, Head Trip is definitely one if you like are on the fence about, I would highly suggest considering it. If you're a really big party gamer, this one does a really great job with a lot of players. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Head Trip. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description from those evil dastardly human beings that made cards against humanity and secret Hitler. Uh, you can also go check out our website on filteredgamer.com. There's blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget our live streams on Sundays at 6, 3 p.m. PST. And every other Wednesday, we do a whatnot stream. It's where we sell games, show off games, talk about games, just have a good fun time. That's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to being a depressed, sensitive hitman who reads poetry and thinking about what it would be like to sing a lullaby <laughs> and, and what my favorite lullaby would be in Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I will crush with my, I will crush you with my car. So much pain you'll want to die. I will make your family cry. This game's nuts. <laughs>